season. Now, just right off the bat, uh, to keep it real with you guys, I did not watch very much football this week. I had a super busy week. Um, had to do a lot of housework, uh, did some renovations and stuff um, around the house, so I didn't get to watch a ton of games. The only games I saw this week, I only saw three. Seahawks versus Commanders, Raiders versus Jets, and Bills versus Broncos. Um, I guess it just been a super busy week for me, unfortunately. So uh, we're gonna go through these. It's probably gonna be a little bit of a shorter video than usual, but we're gonna go through these here and talk about um, the games and compared to my predictions from last week. So. Here we go, starting with the Panthers versus the Bears. Um, I predicted that the Bears would win this one. And the Bears do win this one. It's a super close game. 16 to 13 in favor of the Bears. Which is funny because this game started with a Carolina punt return touchdown. But the Bears do ultimately end up winning it. Um, Bryce Young, he has 21 completions on 38 attempts, 185 yards, 0 touchdowns, 0 interceptions. Tyson back into again in a QB for the Bears. Some people are talking about like. Um, he might just be the starter now, because uh, I think was Justin Fields healthy this week. Um, I thought I saw there was some like controversy around that. haven't made a determination on if Justin Fields will play. They need to have more time to evaluate him, so. Sorry, my, uh, that was my dog. I don't know if you heard her walking in. She's just sitting down here. I'm sure she's gonna walk away in a minute. Now I'm gonna deposit this again, but, um, yeah, so it seems like they're playing the whole Justin Fields and back in situation close to the chest. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that works itself out going into next season. I already see a lot of people saying that they don't think Justin Fields will be with the team in 2024, but I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, I hope that wasn't too loud. Um, but I don't know if I said his stats are not 20 for 30, 362 yards, zero touchdowns, or interceptions for back end. Colts versus Patriots. Um, I predicted the Colts to win this one. This was a super, super close game. This is your Germany game, and I feel bad for those fans in Germany that probably shelled out for super expensive tickets to see this Colts Patriots game that ended with a score of 10 to 6. When the over under was 42 and a half, like Indiana was a one half point favorite in a game with an under and over under over over under 42 and a half, and they combined for 16 total points. Just a brutal game to watch, and this game ended in um, this game ended. An absolute disaster. The ending to this game has kind of gone viral a little bit. Mac Jones um, with that huge just interception there at the end of the game. And there's all sorts of rumors swirling now about the front office of the Patriots, Bill Belichick, um, his future with the team, things like that. Um, Mac Jones is cooked. I don't, he's, he's done. Like, his, his, he has looked so bad this season. All faith in him has to be gone at this point. Um, I don't see any way that the Patriots keep Mac Jones going into next season. Like, you'd just be... It feels like it'd also be irresponsible of them to do that. 
I don't know, but um, yeah, Gardner just just not a, not a great game, and th the fact that this is the international game makes it even worse in my opinion. Uh, Gardner Minshew, 18 completions, 28 attempts, 194 yards, zero touchdowns, one interception. Mac Jones, 15 on 20, 170 yards, zero touchdowns, one interception. Like your your two quarterbacks, and a single one of them throws a touchdown in an international game. Like you know, the NFL was not happy about how this game went. They were not happy. Packers versus Steelers. I predicted the Steelers here on this one. And they do end up getting the win 23 to 19 in their favor. Najee Harris with another touchdown. I think he had one last week as well. He's like low key, starting to step it up a little bit here recently. Um, yep. 19-23 final score, the, the Steelers have, they've been on a little bit of a roll recently, um, and they have, they, well, they have the Browns next week, so it's gonna be a rough game for them, but, um, but yeah, I mean, up, up to this week, they, they've, they're one of those teams that's, like, good, not great, they're not bad, they're not, you know, um, Jordan Love, completions, 40 attempts, 289 yards, 2 touchdowns, 2 picks. Kind of a brutal game there from Jordan Love. He had that one week, a couple weeks back early in the season where he looked really good and people like losing their mind a little bit talking about like, oh no, like the Packers are going to do it again. They're going to get another like Hall of Fame quarterback and then ever since that game he's just kind of looked like average at best. So I don't know what's going on with Jordan Love there. Kenny Pickett, 14 completions on 23 attempts, under 26 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Now we come to the Saints-Vikings game. I wish I watched this game. This is the Joshua Dobbs. Um, you know, two weeks in a row now, Dobbs has come in. And I guess I'm going to bring the card before the horse here. I did predict the Vikings to win this one. And they did win it. Um, yeah, Kirk Cousins goes down. Everyone's like, man, like the Vikings. You know, this era of the Vikings might be over and done with. Like, what's what's going on here? And then Dobbs has come in now, and he is just... He's been the guy. He's been so good. Um, well, these, these last couple weeks, you know, he thought maybe week one was just an aberration or something, like, okay, you know, he's a new guy in a new system, but he'll, he'll come back down to earth a little bit. Now he had a great game this week, too, and the Vikings win this one 27-19. to 19. Vikings are 6-4, and four. I remember they started this, what, they started this season, like, 0-4, oh right, like, people were saying they were dead in the water, I was saying they were dead in the water, like. But they've bounced back. Jefferson goes down. They keep rolling. Kurt goes down. They keep rolling. The Vikings are a very interesting story right now. Very, very interesting story. Um, but yeah, Dobbs has that one the highlight play from this week. He drops back, scrambles, kind of does a spin move. Does a little bit of a spin move. Goes, runs into the end zone, like extends for the touchdown. That's his rushing touchdown he got this game. Um, he had 23 completions on 34 attempts, 268 yards, one passing, one rushing touchdown, no interceptions. Meanwhile, Jameis Winston in for the Saints has a classic Jameis Winston game. 13 completions on 25 attempts, 122 yards, 2 touchdowns, 2 interceptions. Just, you know, classic Jameis Winston game um, right there. Both those touchdowns came at the end of the game unanswered, though, so they're kind of starting to go for a little bit of a comeback, but it's too little too late. Um, now we go 
Welcome to my first, uh, my first L of the week, Texans versus Bengals. I predicted the Bengals. CJ Stroud stepped up this week. my breakings from last week. Do I still have that piece of paper? Okay, so I usually, this isn't the time of place, but these are my power rankings from last week, right? At one, that's so last week I had Philly at one, Chiefs at two, Ravens at three, Lions at four, Jags at five, Whatever, whatever, down at 10, I had the Browns. Or if I'm doing the power rankings today, I might go Philly at 1, Chiefs at 2. Give me the Lions at 3. Dallas 4. Browns 5. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it, but that's just top of my head thinking right there. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, that Browns, the Browns team stepped up. Deshaun Watson was literally perfect in the second half, passing like he did. I don't think he missed a single pass in the second half, which is crazy because this game opened up on a Deshaun Watson pick six. That Browns defense really stepped up, and you know they they just got this done. And then it doesn't it doesn't help at the end that. Lamar Jackson pick six, you know, that pick six going the other way is what sets up the Browns to win it with a field goal at the end. 
final score 33 to 31. Deshaun Watson goes 20 completions on 34 attempts, 213 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Lamar Jackson 13 for 23, 223 yards, one touchdown, two picks. And um, yeah, man, this if this Browns team gets into the playoffs, I think this defense will cause some issues in the playoffs. You know, because it's going to be more important in that playoff environment to have a good defense, and their defense is nasty. Titans versus Buccaneers. I predicted the where did I not predict this game? Did I not predict this game? Did I skip it somehow? Oh, right there, I predicted the Titans. To the Titans. Well, that was incorrect. <laughs> um, final score was 20 to 6 in favor of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Will Levis has 19 completions on 39 attempts, 199 yards, zero touchdowns, one pick. Not a great showing for Will Levis um, after what we've seen from the last couple weeks. Baker Mayfield, 18 for 29, turns into yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Now we get the return of the Niners. I predicted the Jaguars to win this just based off of, you know, three losses in a row for the Niners. The Jags had been on a winning streak. Um, they looked really good, but the Niners came out. They dominated this game. They were only a three and a half point favorite, so... Yeah, Taz, you know, this is a fluke going either way. Niners, Jags, did the Jags have an off game? Niners were just particularly good, I think. You know, I guess we'll see. Uh, I'm still not convinced. Um, I, I did a little bit more research. I saw, because last week I mentioned um, when I did my power rankings, I couldn't think of any NFL team that had won a Super Bowl after having three consecutive losses during the regular season, and I found out there was one. And it was the New York Giants in, I believe, the 2011 or 2012 season, whatever that, that their Super Bowl season, when they were 9-7. and seven. They had a streak of four losses in a row that year. Uh, but beyond that, I didn't look super hard, just kind of did a quick scan, but beyond that, I couldn't find any other Super Bowl winning team that won, that, were, that lost three games in a row, so that's kind of the reason I've been a little bit, like, iffy on the Niners, um, but they came out, they dominated this game 34-3, to the Niners and the Jags are now both 6-3, Brock Purdy has 19 completions on 26 attempts, 296 yards, 3 touchdowns, no interceptions, Trevor Lawrence 17 for 29, 185 yards, 0 touchdowns, 2 interceptions. Definitely does help though that, um, was it Ayuk that was injured or Samuel? I thought it was Ayuk. Yeah. Was it Ayuk? Yeah. Depo. Yeah, okay, so yeah, it was Samuel that was hurt, and he ended up coming back, and he had a touchdown as well in this game, so you know, he definitely did help make a difference there. Alright, Lions, Chargers, I predicted the Lions, they did get the win here, but it was super close, finally, at four straight W's, and then four straight L's, we can finally go back into the W column here. Um, well, the Lions win this one, 41 to 38. Sitting at seven and two, the Chargers are in kind of a tough spot. They're at four and five. The 
looking at that AFC West, they have the Packers coming up next, so that's not a bad spot. They'll probably win that one, I'd imagine. But, you know, you look at the AFC West right now, the Chargers are sitting at 500. I think the Chargers, excuse me, the Raiders sitting at 500. I think the Chargers could theoretically move past the Raiders. But now, which I'll get to when we get to that game, be the Broncos, who now have the same record as the Chargers, and they're surging. So like I said, we'll talk about that in a minute. And, you know, the Chargers are in such a weird spot. As a fan of Justin Herbert, I, I, I don't like the way that their their season's playing out. Um, it, it feels like they're going backwards a little bit, but the Lions are in a great spot right now, firmly, in my opinion, a top five team in the league. There's been a few little hiccups along the way, but Jared Goff, 23 for 33, 333 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. It's crazy that they lost this game when you look at Herbert's stats. 27 completions on 40 attempts. 323 yards. Four touchdowns. Justin Herbert lost a game that he threw four touchdowns in, which I assume is, like, extremely rare. One interception. Um, actually, I want to have a look. Um, losses. Most losses by a QB when throwing for four touchdowns. Eli Manning holds that record. That's brutal. Eli Manning lost six games in his career where he threw for four or more touchdowns. That's brutal. Number three on that list is my favorite NFL player of all time. Dan Marino. A little bit of trivia snippet of you watching Cardinals Falcons I actually I predicted the Cardinals to win this one I thought Kyler Murray coming back might give the team a little bit of a boost I wasn't super sold on uh, the Falcons at this point and the Cardinals do end up getting the win 25 to 23 super close game this is the game that should have been in Germany, let's be honest, combined for 48 points. Um, you know, the, this is the sort of stuff that should have been in Germany. Not the uh, Colts Patriots. Taylor Heineke went 8 for 15, 55 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions. Kyler Murray in his return from injury. He had 19 completions on 32 attempts, 249 yards, no passing touchdowns, but one rushing touchdown. And he also had an interception. I feel like Tyler, Tyler Heineke only having 55 yards. There must have been another QB that played. Yeah, Desmond Dredger, 4 for 6, 39 yards, 0 touchdowns, 0 picks. Jesus. Atlanta's QBs even combined for 100 yards. No, that's 80. That's 94 yards. The Atlanta Falcons played two different quarterbacks, and together they combined for less than 100 yards. Hey, what is Atlanta doing? What is, what is Atlanta doing? That is brutal. That is so brutal. All right, Commander Seahawks, finally. We have a game that I actually was able to watch. Um, I predicted the Seahawks would win this game. They did. Final score is 29-26 to 26 in favor of the Seahawks, and let's talk about it. So I turned the game on. There was 13 minutes, 26 seconds left in the first quarter. The score was 6 nothing. Commanders. I said that the Seahawks need to respond or lead some must-win game. Jackson Smith and the Jig was getting some big plays early to keep the Seahawks alive. Emmanuel Forbes gets ejected from the game for helmet to helmet hit on Lockett. Jackson Smith and the Jig tries to stretch out, ends up a yard short of the touchdown. Seahawks go over on fourth down. 
down, there's a delay of game. Seattle's forced to settle for a field goal. Because at that point, the offense is such a mess. I was hating watching it. Third and nine. Commanders commit a false start. Pushes them to third and 14. Turnover. Seahawks go three and out. Commanders settle for a field goal. And then Gino just starts connecting on every pass. Seattle marches down, tacks on a field goal, brings it within three. Seattle defense comes up huge after that, forces a punt. Gino scrambles to keep the drive alive. Fourth and one, Seattle gets a false start. You know, that's two penalties now in this game on fourth and one, which is a real issue. Field goal. And then Gino Smith gets an intentional grounding with ten seconds left in the first half. Start of the second half, Geno Smith gets sacked on third down. Then Washington comes down, kicks a field goal. Kenneth Walker then he has a massive 64-yard rushing touchdown. And then Sam Howell gets stripped by Witherspoon, this dude Witherspoon. I'm, I've decided when I get my Seahawks retro throwback jersey, I'm putting Witherspoon on the back. This dude has been an absolute beast. Wollin recovers Seahawks ball. Seahawks are then forced to bunt after the turnover. But then there's the next drive. There's a massive sack on Sam Howell that stops the Washington offense that had been moving well. I said defense, I meant offense. Howell to Gibson with a touchdown that dies the game. Seahawks next drive. DK Metcalf has a massive catch, keeps the drive going, and then it's Geno to lock it in the end zone for the touchdown. Seattle defense forces a fourth down. Washington goes for it and converts. Deami Brown gets a touchdown. Less than a minute left in the game, dies the game. Seahawks march down the field. DK has a huge reception, but the puts Seattle in field goal range. Three seconds left. It's all up to Myers, and Seattle wins the game by three. This game was... I was just pacing around watching this game. This was super close, super tense. Sam Howell goes 29 for 44. 312 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Geno Smith, 31 completions on 47 attempts. 369 yards, two touchdowns, or interceptions. I do have to say, Sam Howell did impress me at this game. I think I've been hard on him at different points this season, but he looked good out there. And this, you know, say what you want about the Seattle offense, but our defense is pretty legit. Um, and he was he was playing, performing well, playing well. I, I, I actually was pretty impressed with Sam Howell at this game. Now we get Giants, Cowboys. Um, the Cowboys are trying to make statements right now, man. They're trying to come out here. I mean, now of course it is just against the Giants who've been struggling, but it's still it's a division game, and the Cowboys are trying to put the league on notice a little bit here. Forty-nine to seventeen is your final score in that game, and I did predict the Cowboys to win it. Um, Tommy DeVito for the Giants has 14 completions and 27 attempts, 86 yards, two touchdowns and a pick, on the less than 100 yards for DeVito there. Dak Prescott has 26 completions on 35 attempts, 404 yards, four touchdowns and a pick. Over 400 yards passing for Dak, they put almost 50 points up, like like I said, the, the Cowboys are they're trying to put put the league on notice a little bit. They they're they're coming. Last week I think I had Dallas at eighth. Let me see. I think I had Dallas at eighth. No, I had Dallas at seventh last week on my power rankings. I'd probably put them at Philly Chiefs, Lions. Browns, Niners, I'd probably put him at 6th, maybe, maybe we'll have to see what Miami does next week to see, but Dallas is definitely in the mix right now, definitely.
actually in the mix. Alright, next up, another game that I was able to watch, Jets vs. Raiders. And I did predict the Raiders to win this one. Although at a certain point in the game, I do admit, I, I did start cheering for the Jets a little bit. Um, and I have to admit, I, I was watching this game, but I did not take very many notes because this game was extremely boring to watch. Um, Raiders start with the ball, nothing comes of it. Wilson to Wilson, 46 yards, massive reception. And um, then Jets get the field goal to put points on the board first. AOC is a nice pass to Adams, 41 yards. Raiders get stuffed on third down. They go for the field goal. Then Jets come down. They get another field goal. And I was like, man, this game's already boring. Aiden O'Connell throws the first interception of the game. Right to Whitehead. Puts the Jets into the red zone. Brees Hall hurdles a guy. And he, like, he's down the ground. Hurt. It, was, it was not good. Um, if you look at it, it looks like Hall's knee hits him in the head a little bit as he was hurtling. But he ends up leaving the field. Zach Wilson runs it in for the touchdown, his first rushing touchdown of the year. But then they review it. He actually stepped out at the three yard line. Jets can't get into the end zone. I said that's a massive failure to settle for the field goal there. They're giving the Raiders life. Raiders get down into field goal position. Jets make a massive defensive stand. Huge sack and O'Connell gets them back to the 40. And they're unable to kick the field goal. It's crazy. Jets continue to commit stupid penalties as we start the second half. A chop block sets them up for third and 21. Both teams looking extremely flat to start the second half. And they're just going back and forth, punting the ball. Kind of started to do now a little bit at that point because it was just punt, 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 punt. There's nothing to watch. Raiders get a field goal to even the score at 9 just before the 4th quarter. And I, I wrote in my notes, for the love of God, don't let this game go to overtime. Josh Jacobs is a massive run, gets down to the 10-yard line, sets up the Raiders for first and goal. O'Connell gets pressure, drops back to the end center, Meyer touchdown. Jets get the ball back, Brees Hall immediately makes a 35-yard reception, third down, Wilson scrambles only, gains the yard, runs out of bounds, field goal, pulls the Jets within four, but at that point, that's that's the end of the scoring right there. Final score is 16-12 to 12 in favor of the Raiders, Zach Wilson has 23 completions on 39 attempts, 263 yards, no touchdowns, and interception. And Aiden O'Connell has 16 completions on 27 attempts under Dan, 53 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Last game of the week. And I am glad that I watched this one. Um. for spills. Now, I predicted the Bills to win this, but if you watch my prediction video, you know I was a little bit trepidatious about that decision, and I ultimately picked the Bills to win because I had a, a viewer, a subscriber, who was going to this game. It was his first NFL game in person. So that, you know what, I, oh, for his sake, I hope the Bills win. Um, and unfortunately for him, they didn't. Oh, man, this this game. Um, the Bills have fired their uh, offensive coordinator, uh, Ken Dorsey, after this game. But I'm going to be honest, I don't think that it's going to make that big of a difference. Like, okay, he wasn't amazing, but I don't think the team is going to be better dramatically now that he's gone, um, because Josh Allen this season has just turned into a turnover machine, and he can't control his turnovers, and he can't, they're, they're saying it's mostly on corner routes, like 
cycle on the sidelines is when he's throwing most of his interceptions. And um, the Bills are in the same issue that a few other teams that are having that I've commented on, which is like when the field shortens up and the deep ball is no longer an option, the offense stagnates, and I, I usually put that on the quarterback. Uh, the quarterback not having the confidence to operate when he doesn't have space on the field. Um, but here's some of my uh, my comments that I wrote. Bills fumble the ball, receiving the kickoff, and it's Broncos ball. Right then, I was like, this game, that, right then, I was like, the Bills are going to lose this game. Broncos drive, and it's field goal, not a bad start. Bills march towards the end zone, third and four. Josh Allen throws an interception. Bills already have two turnovers. And I said that I have a lot of concerns about Josh Allen this season. It feels like he's regressed. Denver offense shockingly looks better than Buffalo so far. Bills having trouble converting third downs in the first half. Broncos get down to the end zone, back-to-back -back run, set up a pass on third and six. They can't convert. Broncos bring up the field goal unit on fourth and two instead of going for it. They end up, but then they end up going for it. Russ is pressured, scrambles back, incomplete to the end zone. And he's inbounds. So, like, it looked incomplete, but in their view, it, he's inbounds. His foot was just barely there. It's a touchdown, but the extra point isn't good. And according to, I believe it was StatCast or something, they, they do, like, eh. I'm not sure exactly how they do it. I don't know if it's, like, an AI thing. But that pass, they're saying, is the most difficult touchdown reception in NFL history. Like, if you're analyzing it using their model or their machine learning or whatever it is, it analyzed every touchdown pass reception. And they're saying that touchdown pass reception is the most difficult in the history of the NFL. And I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, Josh Allen has a deep pass on a wheel route to Kincaid in the end zone. They went left in the half. Bills attempt a two-point conversion. Allen drops back, and it's good. Bills pull within one point. Broncos run the ball in a second and 20. I thought that was a weird decision, but then they get a field goal. 45 seconds left in the first half. Buffalo gets the ball back. Josh Allen immediately throws an interception. Gives Denver the ball back in good field position. And is it Josh Allen's playing worse than some rookies this season? He has two interceptions so far at this point in the game. And Josh Allen now has six straight games where he's thrown an interception, which is extremely alarming. Broncos hurry up offense. They get the field goal before half. Denver's up seven going into halftime. And the Bills are showered by booze as they head back to the locker room. Start of the second half. Broncos offense comes out flat. They get a three and out. Bills go for it on fourth down, turnover, Denver gets the ball to field. Third and six, Rust is sudden, he fumbles, Buffalo recovers. Bills run it in, the game is tied. Denver gets the ball, Rust gets sacked on third down, I said Buffalo has a chance to take the lead. Then there's a handoff to Cook, and Allen fumbles, Josh Allen like, fumbles the handoff. Denver recovers the ball, just a complete disaster for Buffalo. But Denver does not make them pay. Denver is forced to punt, and then the Bills punt. Play action for Denver, and it's good. Russ is pressured, gets the ball to an open receiver, Williams. And I said the Denver offense is having an amazing game. Broncos go down for two-point conversion, fails, and I said a touchdown wins it for Buffalo. Bills come out, they immediately get big yardage, get into the red zone, and the Denver defense is completely capitulated. Allen rolls out to his left, touchdown, Bills take the lead, a minute 55 left in the game. Second down, Russ gets sacked, sets up third and ten, but the Broncos convert it. 
Buffalo ran the same blitz two plays in a row. Broncos let the clock run. They they bring out the field goal unit, but it's no good. He misses the kick. But then you have just an insane ending. Totally brutal if you're the Bills. There's 12 men on defense. Too many men on defense, so he gets to kick the ball again. And on the second try, it's good. And the Denver Broncos beat the Buffalo Bills 24-22. to Russell Wilson has 24 completions on 29 attempts. 193 yards, 2 touchdowns, 0 interceptions. Josh Allen has 15 completions on 26 attempts, 177 yards, 1 touchdown, 2 interceptions. I don't know where the Bills go from here. I really, I really don't know where the Bills go from here. Firing Dorsey isn't going to cut it. I think he might not have been the answer, but he wasn't the problem. I don't think he's going to fix what's between Josh Allen's ears and that's a big part of the problem right now. I think the head coach is also a problem. But anyway, we had 14 games this week. I got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, correct. 9, 14 this week. 4, let's see what that is. still sitting at 58%, but this is like exactly 58% now, so not bad. This is so far I'm just slightly above average. And I saw this I saw this guy talk and I don't know how um I don't know how accurate or how true it was, but he was saying something like mathematically this is the most difficult season in the NFL in a very long time. I don't remember exactly how long, but they're saying it like week to week. Like, it just doesn't really make sense. And I go back to what Tom Brady said uh, at the beginning of the season where he's saying, like, there's a lot of bad football being played this year. And I feel like I see that week in and week out. You have teams that now are so inconsistent outside the Chiefs and the Eagles that you don't really have any front runners. You have teams that are meant to be good, losing by big numbers. And I know the NFL is all about, like, any given Sunday, things like that. But I don't know. There's just something right now where it feels like it just feels like there's a lot of bad football being played. I don't know. It's like, a, it's like the talent pool is diluted or what it is. But anyway, man, that's my week 10 review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about this week of football in the comments down below. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up. And subscribe to the channel for more content just like this almost every single day. Until next time, guys.